This video is going to take a look at a fairly small area of unit testing which involves testing private methods. So we're going to take a look at how you can test your private methods firstly by using the reflection tools from Java and then secondly by using the power mock library which can be imported into your project. I'm just going to navigate to the pom file where we can see that dependency from PowerMock before we continue. And I must say that your decision to test private methods is often a personal choice or done by sort of a project by project basis. Sometimes you may only really want to test the public APIs that are available from each of your classes. But on the other hand, you may decide to test anything that might actually break within your application. And that can also include those private methods. So if we move over to the class that we'll be testing, there's a single public method in this class called grade calculator, and it's called get grades. So it takes in a list of integers, which are your scores, and then it creates a new list of strings. It loops over that list of, sc of scores and calls this compute grade method. This is a private method called compute grade. It takes in the score, and if it is less than 70, it returns the word fail, but if it's greater than or equal to 70, it will return the word pass. So we're going to see how we can test this very small method here called compute grade. So I'm going to move into the grade calculator test class where we can begin writing our tests. So the first one will be using the reflection library, which is available as standard with Java. First, I'm going to create an instance of the grade calculator class, which we can then reference within the test. Now, using the reflections library, we need to define the method call and its parameters because we could have many method calls called compute grade, but it may be overloaded to take different parameters. So we're going to specify exactly which method which we're going to be calling by defining just a single integer as the parameter. So I've defined an array of different classes with a size of one, and that first instance is going to be an integer class. I've then used the method class from the Java Lang reflect library to obtain the first instance of the grade calculator and to declare a method. So this get declared method will obtain the actual method that we want to manipulate. And the name of the method is compute grade and that compute grade instance of the method that we want will be using these parameters. So it would be just a single parameter of an integer class. And then lastly, what I've done is I've called this set accessible method, which will make that private method available to this method call from the test class so that we can actually invoke it later on within our test. Next, I'm going to build out the test that we would like to invoke upon this method call variable. So I've defined an object array with a size of one, and I've specified that first argument to be the number 70. So this is what we're going to be passing in to our compute grade method call. Now to obtain the actual grade that we want from our method call, we use this invoke method call. We pass in the instance of the class that we want to be testing upon. And then lastly, what we do is we have this method argument here, which are the arguments we'll be passing in to the actual call. And next I'm going to define the expected grade that we expect to receive. So if we're passing in the value of 70, we would expect to receive a grade of pass. I'm now going to use the assert equals method to test that the actual grade and expected grade are both equal. If I run this test, I can expect it to pass. And if I were to change that first argument, let's say to 60, we can now expect the word fail to be returned and therefore this test should also be failing as well. So expected pass, but we actually received fail. So we've successfully tested this private method from our grade calculator while keeping that method private. Well, the problem by using the reflection package from the Java library 
is that we've got quite a verbose kind of test. So we have this kind of class array that we're passing in just to define the method call that we're trying to make. And then we're defining another object array, which are the arguments which we'll be passing in. And this can be quite a heavy amount of code to be writing when testing just a small private method call. So we're now going to explore the PowerMock library, which can be used to reduce the amount of code that we write when testing private methods. So when using PowerMock, the first thing we're going to do is to create that grade calculator instance. And then the second part of this test will involve actually invoking this compute grade method call with the argument of 70. So when using the reflection utils to define that method call and then to define the arguments that we'll be passing in and then to invoke it is kind of this amount of code. Whereas with PowerMock, we can use the whitebox.invoke method call to do all of this on a single line. So if we take a look at this invoke method call, the first argument will be the class instance that we want to be testing. The second argument is the name of the method that will be executed. And then that third argument will be all the different arguments that we want to pass in to that method call. Finally, I'm going to define the expected grade that we want to receive and then compare the two using assert equals. Now, if we run this test, we can expect it to pass. If I were to change the argument, let's say to 60, we can now expect this test to fail. So we can see that by using PowerMock, we're able to invoke a method call that is private, and we can specify the arguments and the instance of the class all on a single line. So that concludes this video on how we can use the PowerMock library and also the Reflect library from Java to test private methods for the rare or not so rare instances where you feel you need to test a private method.